All right, guess this. Today, we're going to be changing a fixed prop to a folding prop, which is made by Seahawk in Melbourne, Australia. It fits most sail drives. Today, we're going to change it on the SD20. Here it comes now. It has a bit of corrosion in there for some odd reason. Uh, we have had a few prop wraps here at one point or another. And there is a bit of gunk in there as well. Right, we can see within their shaft here, it is quite corroded. So we're gonna to have to give that a clean up before we do anything else. We do find prop wrap in there. See that, Junior? The hex nut there, which is holding in the sacrificial anode. Ah, and there's a lot of gunk in there. Very important that we, um, every time we change propellers or, or service the sail drives, always replace your sacrificial anodes. These actual anodes, you, you, they're designed that you can change them while, while you're in the water. They split into two pieces. Very simple, this is it. You don't have to take the whole propeller off to do it either. You can pretty much do this and off they go. And that's it, you can change your anodes at any single time. Put these aside and then we go into the next part, the brackets that hold the anodes. Nice in pretty good condition, nice and clean. As we remove the anodes, we'll see that the shaft will come out. We have to be careful now with our bucket because the oil will start to pour out. Generally, it's about one and a half litres of oil. While we have it on the bench, give it a good clean of rust and debris. And ensure the shaft is clean of rust as well. Okay, so we've taken off the old um, shaft, just giving it a bit of a tidy up. As mentioned before, when we take this off, let's have a look at the mechanical seals. So we might have to change out the mechanical seals and, and the actual O-rings, which every good sailor has spares on each part in there. These are really good. We don't need a particular tool to take this off here. We pretty much just pop it off. Another great design by Soul Drive with the SD20. And there we are, slide that out. We'll have a look at the mechanical seal that sits within here. And the mechanical seal is in really good condition. I'm not gonna bother changing it, even though I have spares. I'm pleased with that. We'll give it a clean out inside for closer inspection. That oil is really bad. Very dirty oil, isn't it? Okay, we'll get a spray. There's no burrs. We're pretty clean inside. Just keep getting over that mechanical seal. There we are. Now people might be worried because there's seems to be a screw missing. Yep. Like that one. <laughs> <laughs> think that there's a screw missing but there isn't there's just a space where the screw is doesn't go so rest assured don't do what I did and start looking for a screw gun oh my god it's missing where did it go there's actually a spot there or a, a gap which doesn't take a screw Hey! Oh! <laughs> bit hot. I forgot about that bit. <laughs> Voila! Now, we're up to a stage where we can start preparing to install the new folding props. A bit of oil? A bit of grease. Just a little bit of grease down the shaft. Just to keep it, maintain a little bit, keep it a little bit fresh. And it slides down into the propeller nicely. Okay, so this consists of some key components. First, we have the body of the propeller. We have the twin blades with their gear mechanism. Then we have the pivot pins. We have the small grub screws. And then we have the large grub screws. And that is what we use for this slipstream propeller. Now we're going to assemble all this 
and assemble the shaft back into the sole drive housing. Which holds the whole shaft in place actually. This will pull everything tight so both the O-rings are sealed in place. It has a two O-rings as a contingency. So we don't want to be losing oil in the ocean. Next is this particular bracket, which holds in the bolt so it doesn't come out. And that large bolt that is holding or covering it ensures that the whole housing doesn't come off. So it's a double backup or extra, extra contingency. Another great design. Second bracket to hold in the second bolt. So the bolt doesn't come out. So no Loctite is required. Next part is always change your sacrificial anodes. The others are in good condition. Let's put these on because might as well, they're new. While we're at it, might as well put them on. These things you can do underwater as well. That's the design and the beauty of it. I don't want to be under the water doing this. I'd rather do it while we're sitting here comfortably under a boat. Sleeve goes onto that. Well, the actual housing slides over the shaft. Boom. -boom. You see, we've got a very slight gap through here. We don't want any prop wrap in there. There's something you can't really help, but let's fingers cross, let's hope. We don't get any prop wraps. If we do, you can always take off the sacrificial anode to get into it and pull it out. The lock nut that, and the lock tights is supplied by Seahawk. And we coat those nut, all that thread, with the blue lock tight. That means a blue lock tight we don't need to heat. That goes inside the shaft. And we screw it in. And I just give it a bit of a, a tight. Oh, that's it. We have no slop, no movement within that. So the housing to the shaft, there is no, no movement. It's nice and firm, spins freely. Next step is to hold that locking nut in place. We have a secondary item, which is this particular bolt. Now this bolt, once again, we lock tight with blue Loctite, once again supplied by Seahawk. Now it's a bit of a tricky part when we put this in, because as you see, there are holes here, and we need to try and line the, the holes to the actual spaces in between this lock nut. And the reason for that is we can run a wire through there as a third and final locking mechanism. Don't tighten it all the way, because I need to try and line this up with the wire. So the wire, once again, supplied by Seahawk, is we try and find the hole. We found a hole. We come up through it, Long those pliers. Pliers supplied by Seahawk too. Seahawk. <laughs> supplied by um, the hardware. I had the wire hanging there and then I give it a twist with the right Allen key. And I just go a little bit tighter than finger tight. Bam, bend the wire over, and we're gonna make a little knot in it like this with the long nose pliers, not supplied by Seahawk. Give it a twist.
takes this water off. Give it one more tighten. And sure, you try and push it against the nut. Next is the bump stop pad. That will actually hold that help hold that in place. Turn it to the side. We'll grab the two side thrust plates. Line them up. Line them up. We might actually do. And then we get a blade. You can't go backwards. There's only one way to do it. Because I need to close over each other. Then we grab a blade pivot. In. We wiggle it down to the first blade. The little slot here for the grub screw. We got it into place. Now, if we don't, behind here we have like a little flat area here. We can actually get a screwdriver and sort of manipulate it to get it to the right hole. So at this stage, I need to turn this way, and I think I'm pretty much on. I'll get my first large scrub screw without Loctite, and we feed that through first. If you have a look behind here, we're not aligned here. See that? We want that aligned. Now. So the grub screw wouldn't go in. So this is what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the grub screw needs to go into that slot. Here we go, we've got it. So it goes right inside. And that's touchdown. I'll leave that one for now. And I'll go to the other blade. Get the other blade on. Make sure we're in the right position. Don't have it down here when we put it in. Let's get it up to the right position. That's all the way out. That blade's up, that blade's up. And the other pivot pin. Let's try and make it a bit symmetrical. Let's have both of the alignment lines in the same spot. And at the moment I'm blind. Large grub screw without Lock tight again. We've got grub screws in place. Let's finalize with the other two large grub screws. And the final is the little grub screws, which require lock tight on it. And that holds the first grub screw in place. There was a lot of contingencies on these propellers. As we're moving through the water, the water will rush past and close the props off. And they will sit like this. And that is a slipstream, S6. All right, I'm just putting on the Prop Speed New Zealand product. I've got to have it all done, two coats, between three to five minutes on the second coat. So 250 mils will do both propellers and sail drives. I made a mistake when I was in um, Langkawi when I used the whole tin and realized, oh, no way do I need all that, but I've wasted it because you mix it as a two-part product. That ain't gonna happen again, never. We have heaps left. Two coats of primer is all you need and one coat of clear sealer on the top.